Hello and welcome. Thank you for your participation in Moorhead at Home Skywatching, hosted by Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center. My name is Amy Sale and I'm an educator at Moorhead. We are a unit of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, conveniently located on campus. We also work throughout the state of North Carolina through a number of outreach initiatives like our mobile lab vans, summer camp programs, and the annual North Carolina Science Festival. Our mission is to help people better understand science, technology, and health, and we do this through engaging learning opportunities like this live virtual event. And now I'd like to turn things over to Nick Eeks, who will explain our plan for today. Hey, everybody, uh, and thanks, Amy. Uh, this is Nick from Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center. We're excited to be with you today for Moorhead at Home. Basically, what this is, is uh, every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m., we're going to be on uh, for about half an hour talking about our nighttime sky because we miss you. Uh, we miss teaching in the Full Dome Theater uh, on UNC's campus. We miss uh, coming to your schools with our mobile planetarium, and uh, we miss seeing you at sky watching sessions. So even though we don't have our big dome above us right now, we thought we could try to give you some tools for how to enjoy the nighttime sky from home uh, and uh, connect with it a little bit more. So today we're going to get into uh, some technical things about a program that we use called Stellarium. Uh, Stellarium is a free open source program. Uh, there should be a, a link on your screen now for stellarium.org. And uh, this program is really great flat screen simulation of, of the nighttime sky. So I'm going to be using a desktop PC version. But if you go to the website, you'll see some different options for how to download and uh, maybe how to follow along yourself. And we definitely encourage you to do that. Um, the good news is that this is being recorded and it's going to be posted on our website and there will, will be an accompanying blog post. So if you find it a little tough to follow along, you can always go back and reference things. And um, our goal is basically to set you up so that you can see your sky kind of like we do. So what's going to happen is we're going to play a 15 minute pre-recorded tutorial. Um, it was recorded last week, so you might see some dates um, that are a little different than today, but everything should still be applicable. And um, it, it'll kind of walk you through how to use the program. So uh, in order to do that, I'm going to share my screen for you, but we also want to encourage you to um, ask questions. And the best way to do that is going to be to use the question and answer function. It's actually kind of right at the bottom bar of your screen. Uh, right down there. And uh, if you have a question about what we're talking about or something you're interested in, please, please, please put it in the Q&A. And after the tutorial, we'll take some time to talk a little bit more uh, about your questions. And in the coming weeks, we'll get a little bit more into actual sky content. Uh, and if you have a suggestion or something you're interested in, let us know. So for now, I'm going to get us started. And um, again, if you have anything you'd like to ask, put it in the Q&A box. Uh, but we'll talk again in just a couple minutes. Hello everybody, this is Nick Eeks with the Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center and today we kind of wanted to walk you through a, a tour of a software that we're going to be using for some of our online offerings in, in the coming weeks. So this program that you see right now is called Stellarium. Uh, it's a fantastic free software um, that can simulate your nighttime sky. So. As of right now, we can't get into our big planetarium dome, uh, but you can learn about the nighttime sky even through a flat screen. So I encourage everybody to go online to stellarium.org, um, and that way maybe you could even follow along yourselves. But the purpose of this tutorial is to kind of give you some tips and tricks for how we set up our sky and how we're going to be able to move and accurately represent what's up there in the sky tonight. So um, just for reference, you notice that on part of our screen here, you might see some grass. In part of our screen, you see the sky. Um, that's because realistically, if you're outside sky watching, uh, you're going to be in an open space. Uh, if there are trees in the way, it's going to be harder to see things. So part of what we do to be able to set up this sky uh, is aligning it and changing our field of view. So before I get into any other details, um, I have some red letters that are up here on the screen that tell us which direction we're facing. Uh, right in front of us is south. Uh, you might see SE here for southeast, southwest, west up here in the corner, and east over here. Um, this gives us a reference for where we're looking. Now, um, no offense to the north, uh, you know, it's behind us and out of our field of view right now. Um, Maybe in later lessons, we'll be able to point towards the north and show you all some stuff there. But if we were in the full dome theater at Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center, uh, 
and you were sitting in those very comfy chairs, you would be facing towards the south as well. So uh, there's a way to to show those big red letters uh, and to toggle them on and off. Um, some of what we're going to be going through here are hotkeys, a way to do it without clicking around on the screen. Uh, but to take those cardinal points, those north, south, east, and west on and off, you just hit the letter Q. Um, and you see that they disappeared there. I'm going to bring them back so that we can reference them. Now, just to explain a couple of other things that are on our screen right now, um, you might see some numbers down towards the bottom of our screen here. I'm going to kind of hover my cursor right over top of them. Uh, this is one of the menus of Stellarium that can give you all sorts of options. Um, and I'm just going to explain a couple different pieces of those. Uh, one of them, starting over here on the left hand side, is our location. So. Even though um, it might be obvious to some, we are looking from Earth. And I have my location set to right here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Now, uh, I realize that some of you folks might be uh, viewing and, and trying to play with this from different locations. We will get into how you can change your location. And uh, this 149M tells us that we're 149 meters above sea level. That's important because uh, it kind of changes some of what we see in the sky. Now, FOV 127 degrees uh, tells us about how zoomed in our sky looks right now. So we like to keep our field of view somewhere between 120 and 130 degrees so that we can see more of the sky. Later in this lesson, we're going to reference uh, our star charts, which are kind of like a paper copy of what you're going to see here. And that's about the same sort of field of view that you can see in a star chart. Um, so we wanted, wanted that to be kind of realistic. Um, Next is our date and time. This might look a little different than some of us are used to seeing. Uh, it might be out of order. You might see some numbers that you're not used to used to noticing. Well, it tells us the year is 2020. Uh, our month is April 04. Today is the 9th. And right now it's 2.16 p.m. But I know that says 14. Well, uh, astronomers generally use a 24-hour clock or military time. So after you hit 12 noon, it keeps counting up and 1 p.m. is 13, 2 p.m. is 14, and so on. Uh, so that's maybe why that looks a little bit different for us. And uh, UTC, um, don't have to worry about that so much, but this basically tells us we're here in the Eastern uh, time zone. So that is really useful because when we bring up Stellarium, we start at the current time. And you notice that right now in, in your view, it's a daytime sky. So that will change uh, as you move throughout um, the night and different dates. But for now, we're sticking right here in the daytime. So that's kind of what you start seeing on your screen. I wanted to show you a few different options uh, to be able to tailor Stellarium to look how you want it to look um, using using some of the ideas that we've set up. So if you hover your cursor over here on the left hand side of your screen, you'll see you have all sorts of different options. And what I'm going to do for the next couple of minutes is just take you into a couple of these windows and show you how to adjust things on your own. So starting at the top, you see a kind of starburst shape that says location window and F6. If you don't you know, have a mouse to click around with, you can hit F6 and that'll bring up this menu. And it brings up uh, how you set your location. So there's a few ways to do this. Uh, we found the best way is to try to type in the largest city that you're near right here and click it because that automatically puts in your latitude and your longitude, which is how we measure where we are on the map. Um, it also gets that elevation information in there. But you'll notice below that there are some options for get location from GPS and get location from network. You could also try to use that uh, to have a really hyper accurate location. Um, so uh, I set this to our home location here at Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center. You could totally experiment with how the sky changes depending on where you are on the Earth. So this is our North Carolina view, but that's not the only view there is. So that is our location window. You can exit out right there. Um, next on the list is your date and time window. We already kind of discussed the date and time. Uh, you can use the hotkey F5 to bring that up. And uh, if we click on that, uh, it's kind of hiding down here at the bottom of my screen, but it basically has a bigger version of that date and time. So uh, we stay on this date and time tab, and again, it says it's kind of the same thing we see there at the bottom. If you need a bigger version to move to a specific date or a specific time, you can pull up this menu and close that one up. Next, we have a kind of robust menu called Sky and Viewing Options window. 
really there are tons of things you can customize in this program and um, there are user manuals online and all that good stuff but for our purposes one of the most important things that we found in this sky and viewing options window is the amount of light pollution now in the coming weeks we might have a full lesson on light pollution but basically if you live near a city or a town or anywhere that has roads buildings schools any external lights that affects what you're going to be able to see in the nighttime sky. So here in Stellarium, you can actually change the amount of light pollution uh, that we see without having to travel somewhere else. You can take from locations database, which gives the amount of light pollution that they estimate is right there at your home. You notice that it jumped up from three to six because here in the triangle of North Carolina, um, we have a lot of light pollution. So for our purposes, I'm actually gonna not make it super accurate to Chapel hill because i think we want to be able to see a few more stars so i've put it down to three uh, on this scale one is the darkest the the least amount of light pollution and eight is the most amount of light pollution so think about being in the middle of new york city or the middle of los angeles a lot of extra lights and again this menu has tons of customization options i will not get into that right now but it's really easy to be able to play around with this uh, and try it out yourself Next, there is a search window. If you have a specific object, whether it's the planet Mars or a nebula or something like that you'd like to see in the sky, you can bring up a search window um, and just type it in. You should be able to kind of zero in on that object. We also have a configuration window and I'll make sure that's visible for everybody here too. Um, again, this is a lot of technical information, but if you do make changes uh, to how your screen looks, whether it's that field of view or your location, the configuration window is where you're gonna wanna come to save that so that next time you open Stellarium, it's still there. So you can save your view, you can save your settings, and next time it comes up, um, it'll, it'll be in a, in a, way, a way that you like it basically. And if you ever get in here and mess anything up, never fear, you can always restore defaults. So again, many other options here uh, about what comes up on your screen, uh, but being able to save your view and save your settings is definitely really important. So we also have a little bit of calculations and the ever helpful help window. This help window has been uh, very useful to learn these hotkeys. As I scroll through this, you might notice that there are hotkeys for all sorts of different uh, options, whether it's changing your date and time, moving throughout the sky, moving throughout the solar system. Um, this is a way that you can really customize Stellarium to look exactly uh, how you want. So um, often through our star tours that we're gonna do on here, we will be using hotkeys. You might not see us clicking around a whole lot. Uh, and that's so that this can be a smooth presentation for you. So um, it really is okay to do it either way, but you see there are tons of them. You know, even some of us who have used this program a lot we don't have all these memorized um, but knowing a few of them can really be helpful so um, let's take this zoom in and out function um, for an example you see the control here is control up and down on your keyboard that's going to change how our sky window looks so if i zoom in you notice that field of view changes but also our view of the sky changes um, if you ever want to get back to your original field of view, you can uh, hit the backslash key there and it kind of reorients us. But um, that's just one example of many of the things that you can do with Stellarium. One of my favorite things to do is to time travel a little bit. You know, I told you that we're starting here in a daytime sky, but we're not stuck in the daytime. Uh, so using the hotkeys, you can use the letter L to speed up the clock. And maybe you notice we're moving more than one second at a time right now, but it's still not quite fast enough. Let's speed it up, speed it up one more time. Oh, and now it looks like the minutes are clicking up really fast. Um, I wanna make it go even faster because I am really excited to see the nighttime. Now it appears that the sun is moving through our sky. So remember, even though it looks like the sun's moving across the sky, really what's moving is our Earth. Our Earth rotates on its axis every single day, uh, every 24 hours. So uh, you can imagine where we are. It's kind of like we're spinning away from facing the sun. And then we get a look at a nice, dark nighttime sky. 
So uh, to stop that time moving is the letter K, which is right next to L there on the keyboard. Um, and now you see that we have a lot of things that we can look at here in the sky. Um, the last function that I'm gonna show you for now uh, is how to zoom in on an object. Um, the object that I wanna zoom in on is something that many of us have probably seen in the sky. Um, looks different from night to night, and it actually hasn't risen yet in our sky. You notice that our clock is uh, moving forward. You might see some satellites flying around the screen. That's a really fascinating thing to look at in Stellarium. Um, I encourage you to try to look at that on your own. Uh, but a little bit after 9.45, 10 p.m. this evening, which is the 9th of April, the moon's gonna rise in the east, southeastern sky. You notice that Stellarium even gives it a little bit of that nice color that it appears to have on the horizon as we're looking through more of our atmosphere. Um, so I think this program does a really good job of being accurate. And as we move forward, I wanna get the moon a little higher up in the sky and then I'll show you how to zoom in on it. So I'm gonna kick us up one more notch. I know it can be dizzying, but here we are. Um, a little before midnight. I know that is way past uh, some of our bedtimes, but you know, that's the great thing about a program like this is you can time travel and look at the sky as, ha at, as how it would look in the middle of the night. So I'm gonna click on the moon. You notice that a window up here comes up that shows us some details about the moon. Um, we will be able to kind of talk a little bit more about what each of these things means um, in future lessons. But for now, I just wanna zoom in on the moon. So to do that, I'm going to use um, this forward slash, and it takes us right there. Um, here in Stellarium, you can even you know use the click wheel on your mouse or that uh, control arrow that I showed you earlier to zoom in further on the moon, maybe get more details of the craters, um, those areas that have been kind of preserved after objects have hit the moon throughout the years. We still see where uh, things have crashed into it. And you can see the Maria these big dark areas that astronomers once thought were oceans. Uh, really, they're flat areas that were uh, kind of dried volcanic activity, uh, so they look a little different than the surroundings. Uh, but just like that, you can zoom in and explore the moon on your own here in Stellarium. So um, as not to spoil some of our future lessons, I'm gonna take you away from the moon using that, uh, that backslash again. You notice it brings us right back to where we were. So we can ignore all of the rules of space and time here in this program and uh, really try to uh, make the universe our own. So I wanna encourage everybody to try this out. Go to stellarium.org um, to download the program. It is free. There's a whole user manual if you wanna dig a little bit deeper. Um, and I think this is a really neat tool for kids and parents to play around with. And as much as we wish we could be in our planetarium dome with you right now, um, we're very excited to teach you a little bit more about the sky here. So thanks so much for watching uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, um, so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Um, I know it was a, a kind of zoom through a lot of the features of Stellarium, but the great thing is uh, you're playing with the whole universe when you deal with a program like this. So there are lots of options for how to customize it. So again, this uh, recording will be posted on our website and we will have a blog post accompanying it. So if you want to um, reference anything I just said or explore on your own, you'll be able to do that. So um, with the last little bit of our time here, I think Amy and I wanted to try to answer some of your questions. So if there's something related to what you just saw or something you're just curious about, feel free to use that Q&A function right beneath us. And uh, we're gonna look through these now and uh, see if we can answer some of them for you. Okay, um, so somebody asked, can you use Stellarium on your mobile phone? Yes, um, but it kind of depends on what kind of smartphone you have. Um, so I would explore both the, um, the Google Play Store and the App Store for iPhone uh, to see about the different versions. There are lots of different sky simulation apps out there, uh, and some of them have a cost associated with it. And here at Moorhead, we don't endorse a particular app, but there are lots to explore. I think that's one of the great things about kind of learning about programs like this is that um, you're doing science. You're exploring and making your own hypotheses and um, trying to manipulate something uh, that you're maybe not used to using. So it is possible to use Stellarium on your phone, but I would do some exploration uh, on your own.
And I'll also add, Nikki might have already mentioned this earlier, but there's a web version of Stellarium as well. So you can just go on your computer to the Stellarium.org website and um, click the version just to access it right off the internet without even having to download it. It does work a little bit differently. And what Nick showed you in his tutorial was the downloaded version. Um, and I see kind of a follow-up question here from Ginny. Um, you can use the app to kind of actually hold it up and uh, look at what's happening in the sky. Um, I'll have to look into what exact button on the mobile version is to make it so that you're um, kind of tied to a specific location as you move around. Um, but there is a way to do it. So I know a lot of times you might see something really cool up in the sky and wonder what that is. Um, that is the neat thing about those apps is um, there is a function where you can point it uh, and, uh, and help it identify if your GPS information is uh, accurate. So I'm sorry, I don't have a very specific answer for how to press that since we kind of focused on the web version here, but I'm happy to follow up in the chat and, and look that up. Fantastic. So if, if you are thinking about some more questions, we want to give you time to do that. Um, but maybe uh, Amy can help us uh, kind of lead into what we're going to do on Thursday, because I did mention that we're going to do these on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we can give you a little maybe sneak preview of some of the stuff we're going to talk about. Yeah, so um, Thursday, what we're going to do is a sky tour using Stellarium. So we'll show you some good things that you could look for um, in the sky that night. Um, so including, um, for example, there's one evening planet right now. We'll show you how to identify Venus. Um, and that same part of the sky uh, in the west after sunset, we still have the winter constellations, even though it is spring right now. Um, so we'll show you how to find um, the winter constellation of Orion and how to star hop with Orion um, to find some of his friends who are hanging out near him in the sky. Um, and then I imagine we'll also um, roll over to the early morning sky for you early birds out there. And um, there's a lot going on. The early bird gets most of the planets right now. So Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn are in the sky before dawn, um, roughly in that same direction of the sky that the sun will, will be rising. And right now, actually, the moon is uh, looking like it's moving through those planets. Um, so it, unfortunately for North Carolina, I know not everybody watching this lives in North Carolina, but for North Carolina tomorrow, it does look like it's going to be cloudy in the morning. Um, but don't give up. It will be clear again. And uh, we'll introduce you to all that on Thursday, and then we'll take your questions about what you're seeing in the sky as well. And I don't know if we have any other more questions in the Q&A. Oh, I see one. And uh, uh, it's, uh, Samantha asks, where can you find more Moorhead virtual content? Great question. So um, this sky watching session is just one of many things that we're putting out on our Moorhead at Home webpage. So I would encourage you all to check out moreheadplanetarium.org. Um, and under the Explore menu, one of the first things you'll see is Moorhead at Home. Um, that'll tell you about all the different things we're offering. So um, there's some exciting stuff on there. And uh, as we kind of move through uh, the weeks, uh, more and more content is going to be added. You can always follow us on social media, uh, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Moorhead Planetarium or Moorhead Planet. Um, we'll be kind of linking to content uh, from there as well. So there's lots of ways to interact with us and we're excited to do it with you. Um, we all know it's uh, interesting to always be looking through screens at each other, um, but uh, we're, we're still excited and still uh, interested in helping you connect with the sky uh, above you. Okay, and if you all have any more suggestions of um, specific topics you'd like us to handle, uh, specific things you want to learn about the night sky, feel free to include that in the chat. Um, or contact us on social media and we will be interested to hear your suggestions. I'll take one more check, see if we've got any other questions. Doesn't look like it for right now. And we wanna thank you all for participating in our first Moorhead at Home Skywatching virtual event. And we'll hope to see you again on Thursday. See you Thursday morning. All right. Bye, everybody.